Good morning my darlings and welcome to the calm before the storm quite literally we are due a crazy storm later on today we've got weather warnings and it's meant to kick in at lunchtime during which time I will be wild swimming <laughs> which is probably not the best place to be during a storm but I can never turn down an opportunity for a Pilates wellness morning with lovely Chloe at Cornbury and a wild swim so that is what's happening today I cannot wait but it's literally the calm before the storm right now if anything it's quite pleasant it's a little bit chilly um, but not too bad I've just been out to pick a couple of apples because in preparation for this blustery weather we're going to have I wanted to make something really cozy and warming so I'm going to make an adaptation <laughs> Yes, another of my crazy adaptations. An adaptation of my apple and cinnamon muffins that I made last year. This year I just want to make them like a really warming chai version. So I'm basically just going to add in a few different chai spices. Hopefully it will be delicious. And then at midday we'll head over to beautiful Cornbury for our Pilates. We've got a, I think we've got a mushroom ceremony. Not like the crazy kind, but dirty. But I could put dirty in um, some baking as well. I'm sure I'll get loads of ideas later. Yes, they are doing a little meditation workshop. So it's gonna be a really nice afternoon. Of course, I will bring you along with me for all the fun. So I've got all the ingredients here that I need for my chai apple muffins. Obviously a couple of apples, um, butter, eggs, squeeze of lemon juice, some cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla, brown sugar, self-raising flour, pinch of milk, um, and then some of my additional spices down here. Now, as always, I am going to make this in the Thermomix, but you can make this in a stand mixer. Basically mix all the dry ingredients, mix all the wet ingredients, combine the two and you should have a delicious muffin mix. So let's give it a go. I have to also tell you, I am now officially a Skims convert. It's taken me a long time to um, to discover Skims late to the party, but I'm actually wearing, I know it's a complete contrast, but I'm wearing one of the bodysuits right now under this little vest top. It keeps me so surprisingly warm. I'm very, very impressed with the cozy factor. Um, so yeah, big fan of these, and I think I'm gonna be wearing them under like all of my autumn outfits. Just thought I'd let you know. Okay, my darlings, the mixture is done. I have spread it out into, it managed 10 um, muffin trays, so I've got two left over. I've spooned it out um, and I've popped some of the very thin apple slices on top as a bit of decoration. Now, just to finish, um, because I'm not gonna add frosting to these just because that's, you know, takes it from being a little treat to something very, very indulgent. Maybe these ones which don't have the apple on, I will frost those and have those on Friday as a bit of a treat. Now I'm taking a nutmeg and I'm just adding some fresh gratings over the top to really add to that spicy taste. Okay, now these are going in the baking um, oven in the Arga, which is about 180 degrees. I'm gonna set Alexa for 15 minutes, give it a check, but it might need like five to 10 minutes longer, depending on the temperature of the Arga and how the cakes are feeling today. So let's pop them in. Well, these look and, oh my goodness, smell absolutely incredible. The whole kitchen smells so cozy, full of autumn spices right now. The ones without the apple on top look a little bit strange. They've just gone like smooth on the top. So I would definitely recommend adding the apple. It just crisps up really, really nicely. I need to get going now for my Pilates and Wild Swim. So I'm gonna take one of these for the road. Okay, made it to beautiful Cornbury. I'm now uh, following a, a line of cars, mostly Defenders, <laughs> all 4x4s, four through the beautiful grounds of Cornbury House. This is uh, exactly where Wilderness Festival is held. We're actually heading down to the lakes. Um, I have to just show you what I'm seeing right now. You can see all of the deer, including some beautiful albino deer. Oh my goodness. 
just charging through the grounds. It's truly so magical here. Um, so it looks like we're doing the entire session down by the lake, which is absolutely lovely. Um, I think we've got an hour of Pilates to start with, and then we've got the mushroom meditation ceremony, um, and then wild swim. So it's gonna be a really nice afternoon. It's not raining yet, no, no sign of the storm just yet. I probably should have bought a waterproof coat. Oops, um, but yeah, we'll be okay. Post Pilates, Wild Swim and Tea Ceremony. This is our ride back up to the house. How fabulous. Well, my darlings, another fabulous Wild Swim experience. Do I ever not come into the car beaming from ear to ear after a Wild Swim? I think it's just, combination of everything, being in such a beautiful place, surrounded by people with the best energy, the ladies and gentlemen that I meet at these things, it's just such an amazing group. Um, I've come away with so many people's Instagram handles and so many contact details to catch up with so many like-minded people that are all just, oh wow, here comes the storm, my goodness. Um, yeah, like-minded people that are here in the Cotswolds, really um, interested in wellness and yeah, just people with fantastic energy. So we also learnt a lot from the founder of Dirty, which is um, a company that they create these super powerful, intense, um, okay, so basically like tins of freeze-dried mushrooms and there are so many benefits to consuming mushrooms. It can be very calming, can help you sleep, can help with your um, immunity and they have got loads of amazing different blends. They actually served us, um, there was one that was really good for your heart but then there was also a matcha option after our Pilates and I went for the matcha one which I'm literally going to go home and order straight away. You could buy them here today but they've sold out. I think I've just gone wrong. I think I've taken the wrong pathway. This place is so huge. And I think the girls are following me. <laughs> oh no. Um, hmm, we'll find our way out eventually. Yes, they were selling them today, but the matcha was really, really popular. And they've also got like a beauty version, which has something like a thousand times the antioxidant power of blueberries, mimics hyaluronic acid within the skin. So, absolutely fascinating and obviously we all know how I like to go down these like wellness wormholes and get obsessed with things well I can tell that mushrooms is gonna be the next one the finder si found the founder Simon was such an interesting chap um, sorry if you're rattling by the way the screen has kind of dangled off my camera now um, Yes, and he has got, I think they're called the Dirty Dippers, like a club of people that go wild swimming in London in the Serpentine. So if I can find any info on that, or I'll ask him and I'll leave it in the description box down below because if you just want to be surrounded by people that really love this kind of wellness chat, then that could be a really nice group to join in London. Or if you're local to me here in the Cotswolds, then come and join our groups here. But yes, fabulous, fabulous afternoon. Chloe, Pilates Chloe, she, made um, little chocolate energy balls full of dirty mushroom goodness as well so you can eat with them you can drink with them um, yeah just so fabulous and I cannot wait to hear more the founder Simon was actually saying that he's done a podcast with Jay Shetty and Spencer Matthews podcast he's going to be on this morning I think he said on Thursday um, so that's exciting so I'm actually going to find his Jay Shetty podcast right now and learn more about the magic of mushrooms
not magic mushrooms, just the magic of regular mushrooms. <laughs> Hello my darlings, it's a few hours later now and do you know what, it's 6 o'clock but it's already getting dark and we're just having a really chilled evening tonight so I'm going to do my evening skincare right now before I get any more tired. I've said a million times my favourite skincare lazy girl hack is just to do it earlier because at 9 o'clock or in my case half past 8 when I'm getting into bed I can't be bothered with a full-on cleanse. I just want to quickly get it off and get into bed. Whereas if I do it as the evening begins at like 6 p.m., then my skin can enjoy all the benefits of cleanness and lovely nourishing ingredients while I enjoy my evening. So we'll do a little evening skincare together. Today, while we were out, I had my Skin and Me monthly daily dose of delivery. This is how they come every single month. Something that I love about Skin and Me is how sustainably focused they are. So inside these little pouches, which you can just pop open like so, I have got my personalized daily doser, which I'm sure you'll be very familiar with because I talk about it all the time. And for good reason, it is literally my skin savior. So let's, oh, do you know what? I don't think I've ever actually read <laughs> what comes inside here because I'm always just so excited to get into it. I didn't realize it's, even the packaging is personalized to me. So it's telling me my skin goal, which at the moment is to make my pores less visible. It used to be overall texture, but I feel like, I feel like they already nailed it. Like I'm really happy with my texture. The thing that's so fantastic about Skin and Me, which as I'm sure you all know, is a a very personalizable skincare product gives you access to ingredients and formulas that might otherwise be inaccessible let's be honest getting an appointment with a dermatologist is pretty much impossible but also super expensive but with skin and me you take a really really quick online quiz questionnaire send them a couple of makeup free photos and then you get your personalized daily doser with ingredients that are designed just for you by a team of experts so in here it's telling me my priority skin goal to make my pores less visible. It tells me about my monthly active ingredients. And then a little bit of information on how to use them as well. They work most effectively with a simple supportive routine. Great with a gentle cleanser and moisturiser. Use an SPF 30. Apply your moisturiser 10 minutes after your treatment each evening. I mean, I do already do this already, thank goodness. But yes, so every single month you get a brand new daily doser. You are in constant contact if you wish to be with skin and me so say for example like i did like when i felt like i'd reached my goal skin texture wise which was actually just before our wedding i just let them know and i was like okay let's focus on pores now and so they very slightly tweaked my formula it continues to evolve with your skin which is what makes it so wonderful i have seen the greatest improvement in my skin from this one small but mighty product and so many of my friends have as well i've seen a lot of people posting and i've been really enjoying watching these kind of autumn reset videos and people might just be like putting some lovely pumpkins around their home or um resetting their routine because they've got children that are going back to school There's something about september that is really you know it feels like the start of a new season the start of a new school year so resetting yourself for september october and I feel like Skin and Me is a fantastic way of resetting your skincare routine. It is a time of year when often we do see changes in our skin because we've gone from a beautiful warmth of summer to now being inside a lot more, whether it is um, being in front of an open fire, smokiness or central heating, dryness. It is a time when skin can get a little bit a little bit upset so to have something that is really personalized to you that's chosen for your individual skin needs can be a fantastic way of resetting your skincare routine at this time of year i recommend using this all throughout the year and it is something that i personally use all throughout the year i get very excited when i get a brand new one I'm sure you're familiar, but just to remind you, this is what it looks like. Um, you just twist the silk, I'll do it in a second when I've taken off my makeup. You twist it to get your evening's daily dose, apply it onto clean skin, or you can apply it um, after doing a light serum. Sometimes I like to do that on areas which are a little bit more sensitive. And then as it says in the recyclable packaging, give yourself 10 minutes or half an hour and then pop on your evening moisturizer. So I like to do this 
now and then I'll just slather on a nice thick moisturizer before getting into bed. So if you've been trying a concoction of no doubt expensive skincare products and just haven't really been seeing the change in your skin that you really want to see and you're maybe considering talking to a dermatologist or looking at active ingredients, this just takes all of the guesswork out of those active ingredients and is quite literally designed for your skin. The very active ingredients within this really do make a huge impact on your skin and they're chosen for your specific skincare needs. I think that's why so many people try it and fall in love because it's one of those things that really works and that is why you probably see so many people talking about it because it just works so so well i guarantee if any of your friends have tried it they'll be telling you how amazing it is because it's one of those things that you don't want to gatekeep on it because it just makes such a difference it truly does so as always i have got a discount code which means you can get your first month of the daily doser for 4.99 and um that is josie09y i will of course leave a link to skin and me at the very top of the description box and as always if you've got any questions about this please let me know in the description box in the comment section down below it is a brand that i'm so proud to work with because it's made such a huge difference for me boosted my confidence and that of so many of my friends as well it's a product that i'm truly evangelical about and I think the offer that they share is so fantastic for the price versus what you get out of it. This, I would say, is the best value skincare product in my entire collection. Possibly, no, I'm going to be bold and say definitely of my entire beauty blogging career, this is the best bang for your buck. <laughs> I love that expression. So yes, Skin and Me Daily Doser. I'll leave it linked down below. I will... Um, now I'm going to take off my makeup, apply it, and probably run myself a bath, not going to lie. Still need to get the chill from the lake out of my bones. As you saw with just one twist, you get the exact dose for your evening skincare routine, so no waste. You get the perfect amount, so there we go. As I mentioned, in a little while I will pop on my night cream and then we're ready for bed. Also love that this is fully recyclable, as is the postage thingamajig, so I'll pop this in the recycling. And to be honest, darlings, I know I'm very tired, so I probably won't see you again until tomorrow. So, <laughs> good night, and I'll catch up with you again in the morning. Good morning, my darlings. Oh my goodness, fluffy Arama. It is now Thursday morning. I was in the middle of drying my hair this morning when suddenly the power went off and then I <laughs> received a text from Charlie. Just a reminder, power's gonna be out from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. today. Oh dear, I am due to be heading into London today. However, the gates that enable us to get in and out of our house run on <laughs> electricity. We do have an override key. It's not working. I also have half dried hair. It could obviously be a lot worse. I could have completely soaking wet hair. I don't know how I'm gonna get to London. <laughs> yeah. My train is in just over an hour. I think what I'm gonna have to do is call a taxi and find a way to jump over our hedge somehow. <laughs> I'm literally stranded in our home. I also put a wash on at like eight o'clock and it was three minutes from finishing when the power went off. So there's just a load of soggy clothes in the washing machine. If I'd have remembered or if Charlie would have reminded me earlier, I could have set the gates open and not done a wash. But never mind, never mind. At least I'm going to be in London for most of the day, hopefully, um, and not stranded here with no electricity. Charlie made the right decision. He's gone to the gym and he's working from Bamford today, sorting out the products to take to the holiday cottage. So anyway, I'm gonna go and try and put, to, put an outfit together in the dark <laughs> upstairs. Oh my gosh, I can't even use the coffee machine. <laughs> oh dear. So I've made it into 
London, I've grabbed a matcha from Blank Street, £3.90 as opposed to the $12 one that I got in New York. And I was just walking down this street which is in the middle of Soho and thought it looked quite historical and lovely and noticed this plaque on the wall, built in 1720. This street remains one of the oldest examples of English architecture, Georgian houses from the late 18th or early 19th century. How funny, I've walked across the street so many times but never really stopped to think about history and how many people might have walked down this before in various stages of history. So, hmm, very interesting. So I made it to Piccadilly Circus on the bottom of Regent Street and I'm about to do a little bit of shopping but I just spotted this which is literally right here, right by Piccadilly Circus, Urban Farm, the future of food in partnership with the Crown Estate. It says free entry. I can see they've got some vertical growing examples here in the window. I'm very intrigued if this is like an educational space about growing proper food in the heart of London, then this is absolutely amazing. Let's go and check it out. So Future of Food, a festival shining a spotlight on sustainability in food. They've got these growing walls, vertical growing walls, they've got mint, they've got basil, they've got lettuces, rainbow chars. Hey my darlings, I am down on Savile Row now. Please excuse my hair. This is the result of our power cut this morning. I've just had to pull it back into a little bun. So that was very interesting to see a space dedicated to sustainable growing and farming in the heart of Regent Street. I feel like they could have done more there. I feel like it's such a prime space and there was just no one in there apart from me. Obviously they need to do something to really draw people in um, and get people interested in it. They had these little kind of plaque cards where you could find out how to um, make the most out of your supermarket herbs and things like that. But yeah, good to see that people are um, talking about it and thinking about it and giving it such prominence. Hopefully we can get the discussion going a little bit more. I've been chatting about it obviously here on YouTube and a bit more on my Instagram stories too. I just shared a petition that Riverford has started about getting supermarkets to actually pay farmers what they agree to pay them, buy what they agree to buy, and um, generally fairer practice for British farmers when it comes to selling to supermarkets. So I'll add that to my highlights, or actually I'll leave a link down below so you can sign the petition if you agree that farmers should get paid <laughs> what supermarkets said they were going to pay them. Anyway, I digress. So I'm here on Savile Row. Bond Street is the other side there and I've got a fun little sneak sneak peek fact to share with you. If any of you guys remember the days of the topless men that used to stand inside the Abercrombie store just here, um, a little sneak peek, hope I'm allowed to tell you this, but the Abercrombie store here is going to be the London um, launch flagship of RH, of Restoration Hardware. So you won't have to come all the way out to the Cotswolds to Ainho um, to experience RH because they are taking over that epic building. It's all boarded up at the moment, so I'm not sure how long it's gonna be, but that will be very, very in interesting. Anyway, I'm gonna have a little mooch along at Bond Street. I feel far too scruffy to go into the lovely stores, but um, never mind. I'm gonna pop into Ralph Lauren. Uh, I like to see how they style bits in there, just for a little bit of inspo, and yeah, just have a little breath. I mean, they sure know how to pick a location, Burlington Gardens and Savile Row, and it's got to be one of the most beautiful buildings. So yeah, this is where RH England will create their London flagship. The interiors in here are so beautiful, it feels so cosy in here. So I have found myself in the Ralph Lauren changing rooms. It's so lovely here, the way that the store looks, it's like you're in your wealthy American grandfather's home. Really beautiful, I'd love to know who does their interior design. Imagine getting the Ralph Lauren interior designers to do your um, dressing room at home, stunning. 
I'm absolutely roasting in this knit. I'm excited to de-robe. I found a lovely um, cable knit jumper dress and this fabulous skirt. It's giving major kind of Gilmore Girls vibes, which I actually <laughs> watched for the very first time last night. I have never watched it before, but I've been feeling really cozy and autumnal, even more so than ever this year. And um, I keep hearing so many people talking about it. Oh, the lady has very kindly bought me another dress to try. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got a few little bits to try in here. I have also, placed a pretty sizable Ralph Lauren order online and I just got an email that it's arrived at home so um, we'll try these bits on here and I'll do a little try on for you at home as well. The gorgeous knitted, if I can find a photo I'll pop it on the screen here, dress that I wore so much last winter and Christmas was a Ralph Lauren piece um, and they're really good quality. Premium price tag, yes, but really lovely wearable pieces so let's get trying. Well, it's a little bit hard to imagine this dress in situ with a nice pair of boots on um, and hair done nicely and not power cut hairstyle, but it is gorgeously soft and a really nice, um, just cozy fit to it. I've added the belt that I've been wearing all day today and it's just like a classic Ralph Lauren jumper, but in dress form. So I think I'm gonna treat myself to this. I'm loving the browns. I feel like I've got some really lovely brown bits in my wardrobe, but being a neutral, being such a classic design, it's very, very timeless. I always think when you go shopping, you have to be feeling really good in your face and in your hair to really get the full picture. But even with hair pulled back um, and just getting over a cold face. <laughs> I'm still really liking how this looks, even without the belts. Um, but yeah, I think it's a cashmere blend, so it's gonna be nice and cozy and temperature regulating as well. So this is the sign of a very good shop assistant because the lady actually bought this one in for me to try, saying, seeing if I wanted to try anything a bit more fitting, fitted, um, and it doesn't look anything special on the hanger. I definitely wouldn't have pulled this off the rail, but it is a wool and viscose blend. So again, nice and warm, um, but with a little bit of stretch that you need with a style like this, which is what the viscose gives. And it's a really lovely length. Again, just <laughs> imagine with appropriate footwear. Very plain and simple, but I really, really love it. It's got a nice length slit, um, quite fitted, but I have to say, I have actually got my skims on today. Would it be the most unflattering thing in the world if I show you? I feel like we're all girls here, right? <laughs> so yeah, the color makes them feel a little bit granny-ish, but they are actually hilarious because they've got like a mesh bum, so it doesn't compress your bum, which is amazing. So you still get a little bit of a booty. And if you are gonna wear something like this, you're just not gonna be so self-conscious about the tummy area. Um, I think they give me a really nice silhouette. They actually end here, which is where the belt goes in. So very, very streamlined. They've even got a hole in the crotch area for practical reasons, but I'm not sure that I would <laughs> risk that. I'm more than happy to remove them when nature calls. But anyway, back to the lovely dress. I love the roll neck. It's very kind of silhouette. If I stand in front of the light, you can see very silhouette enhancing, nice with a little belt to cinch you in. I think it would look lovely with a scarf draped over and the scarf tucked into the belt. Really nice layering piece. Um, and because of the wool in there, it's going to be a really, gorgeous one for those colder days, meeting days in London. Um, I'll probably need a pair of heeled boots because can you believe I wore trainers into town today? Um, yeah, they're definitely not going to cut it, but I really, really like this um, for a winter piece that's quite figure hugging. Yeah, I love it. Came so close to not even bothering to try this on, but I think I'm gonna treat myself to the two brown dresses. Popped into Dior. Look how cute these little bags are. Shilling, so sweet. My gosh, the green Toile de Jouy cushion. The homeware is so pretty. Oh my gosh, the picnic camper of absolute dreams. Imagine whipping this out in a beautiful, Cotswold Sunset Field. Wow, that is stunning. My gosh. 
Just sneaking in next to the tree to show you my outfit of the day as well because I didn't show you earlier. I've got on my Isabel Moron jumper. This skirt is super duper old, maybe like six years old, if not eight years old from Reese. Little Emma's belt and then, are you proud of me? Todd's trainers and all of my stuff for the day in my tote bag. Well, I have walked an hour from Soho via Bond Street, now down in South Ken. That is the benefit of wearing trainers for a day in London. I might just be converted, but the reason that I have whipped out the vlog camera here is because here in South Ken, down by the Natural History Museum, this is where I used to take my very first vlog photos. I used to come down here in my lunch break. I used to work in the Bessemer building in the um, Imperial College. And in my lunch break, I'd bring my tripod out here on my Olympus pen and I would shoot against these iconic white columns. It's, and it was really the style back then. The bloggers were all taking the photos outside these lovely Kensington buildings and I just got major deja vu. Um, but yeah, it's been a nice walk. I have been listening to lots of podcasts with the founders of Dirty, Simon and Andy, and I'm just very, very fascinated by it. The, <laughs> I can predict it's something that I'll be going on about in a lot more vlogs in the future. But I'm actually heading to a lovely restaurant now called The Bougie, B-U-G-I-S, which is in the Bailey Hotel here in South Canton. It's very elevated Singaporean cuisine. The menu looks absolutely incredible. I'm meeting my lovely friend Hannah. So we're gonna have a fabulous catch up and I cannot wait to eat a lot of very, very delicious food. So let's find it and tuck in. So here we are on Gloucester Road, the bougie Singapore restaurant and I'm already very excited because one of my favorite things in the entire world is a quarter of a crispy aromatic duck. Oh my goodness, the menu looks incredible. Is he doing this morning? Busy tin spectering. <laughs> uh, I'm just busy topping up our seeds. Mm -hmm. So we have that seed mix that we do. I'm trying to get my mum and dad on it now. Yeah. Um, I think I've just had a five minute voicemail from your mother. Sorry? I think I've just had a five minute voicemail from your mum. See, I, <laughs> I have tried to remove my voicemail because of my mum. I love her dearly. But voice, I, who leaves voicemails these days? It's I know. so annoying. Because the thing and is, as well. Text, yeah. You get a text as well, so normally you ignore a phone call or you miss it because you're busy. Yeah. So then you get a missed call, then you get a bit text, mm -hmm. and then you get a flipping voicemail. And also, because she spends so long voicemailing, you can't call her back. No. Because for the next five minutes, oh, yeah, she's yeah, doing yeah. a voicemail. You've got to love it, haven't you? So this, this is what we do anyway. We mix a load of different seeds, and I, I don't really have a formula that I follow, which then means we get a different mixture. This probably lasts two or three weeks, mm -hmm. and then I'll just mix it like that. Yeah. Because then so, you yeah. don't have to get a spoonful out of each jar, you just no, get exactly. one spoonful out of that. No, exactly, and then we do store them, because we order them, I think we, we vary where we get them from, but this was from buywholefoodsonline.co.uk, so they're organic. Yeah. So there we go. <clears throat> we've got roasted pumpkin seeds, we've got linseed, golden linseed, we've got chia seed, we've got sunflower seed, and we have, what are these? That's sunflower. That's sunflower, is it? And more pumpkin seeds. Mm. And um, remind everybody why? Well, this, this is essentially full of lots of omegas, lots of healthy... I don't even really know what seeds are full of, I just know they're good for you. What are they full of? Well, the reason why Tim Spector <clears throat> says to do that is because you're getting a huge variety, and the variety of different um, nutrients in that is really good for your gut. Diverse diet. Yeah. That, um, and do you know what? It has, since going all in on Tim Spector, <clears throat> excuse me, um, has really made me rethink, on a really like boring level, but like, I might think, okay, I already had an apple today, I'll have a banana. 
or I've, you know, had berries on my yogurt yesterday, so yeah. today I'll have apple or, you know, just really trying to get lots of different fruit and veg into our diet. And like I said, when I went to Tottenham Farm Shop, I got the weird looking cauliflower and the weird looking veg because it's different. It's just adding variety yeah. into your diet. 100%. And stuff like that you can't buy from supermarkets. There's that, and that leads me, nice segue, into what I'm loving about raspberries at the moment. <clears throat> this is my hoard this morning. Just there's from this loads, morning? Yeah, there's loads more on there but yeah. that, are, that I want to leave. It's tricky, because I've noticed if you pick them and put them in the fridge, they go bad pretty quickly. So there's a few on there where I'm like, they're kind of ready, but I want to leave them for tomorrow. Mm. So these ones are, there's three varieties here, believe it or not. There's this, and I, I wish I'd written them down. This is obviously your more classic raspberry, but look how much bigger and juicier that is. Yeah. Um, this, you definitely wouldn't get anywhere near a supermarket, which are more of a yellow colour. Yeah. And then there's a more of a deep orange colour. People just wouldn't think they're ripe. No, exactly. Um, and then, yeah, so, and this is our second, I think I posted about it on Instagram, but <clears throat> I read it recently in Gardener's World, I think, which we, which we sort of I divided with the raspberries by accident which is when you plant berries or any sort of bramble bush, you shouldn't really harvest, and it's the same as I guess with apple trees and fruit trees. Harvest in the first year. You shouldn't year. really harvest, particularly with these in the first year. You need to just pick the fruit off and let them, the roots develop. So it's, an, you know, it's a lesson in patience. But I think next year we'll have an even more abundant amount of raspberries. And then also, excitingly, those that know us know we're huge Dalesford fans. However, one thing that a friend of ours, Robin, points out recently, and you know what, cool is boring if we're doing this, but it, it's something we're passionate about, is I read the back of the Dalesford yoghurt. And the Dalesford yoghurt we love, it's organic, it tastes beautiful, and it's made on their farm. Mm. However, it had milk, organic cultures, that's what, or live cultures, that's what yoghurt should be. But there also was milk powder, which was non-organic, and I was a bit surprised. And it's mm. not because it's non-organic, I was just like, why they put milk powder in this? Yeah. And Robin, our friend, who's quite knowledgeable, was like, they shouldn't really, not really sure why. Mm. So, we thought, okay, let's try something different. And Hollis Mead, uh, who we get our kefir from, also do yoghurt, and I've never thought of ordering it. It's not, it's quite pricey, I think it's like four ninety nine. <gasps> And that's a single portion for you. Well, you, this could easily be two to three portions. But that's how much you have every I'll time. I'll probably have this every day, yeah. Darling, so I'm not sure, but, that's so expensive. But it is 100% pasture-fed organic Greek style yogurt. And look at, honestly, this is the best Greek yogurt I've ever had. I had one of these yesterday. Look. Are you going to have that whole thing? You're going to have a 4 99 breakfast. Well, that is quite a lot in there. There's a lot in there. There's enough for two people in there, I Yeah. Um, but look, I mean... <laughs> We've, gone, we've been through this before. When it comes to food, we're willing to spend the money on food because we don't drink, or well, you drink a little bit, but I don't drink. We don't go out a lot. We eat in a lot more. Mm. And it's, it's one of our, our ways of looking on for ourselves. But, I mean, it is expensive, and I think that's something that... Leave is, that, because I'm going to yeah. use the leftovers to make a yoghurt in the thumb mix today, right. as per Nathan's recipe. But that's the only thing, and I think... If I, I said this to you there, didn't I? If I, if I became a uh, Euro Millions winner tomorrow, I'd buy a rugby club and I would make it my mission to make organic produce afford, more affordable. I don't know how we do it and mm. I don't know how it happens. And I think Government you, subsidies. I think that, that's one way. Yeah. I think the government needs to subsidise the organic side of it more, but they're not even looking after any farmers at the moment, mm. as we know from what we're learning from Riverford. Yeah. So it's something we're both keen on learning more about, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And there's a few friends of ours that are in the farming world that yeah. I think we're going to talk to more um, because I'm fascinated. And I, you know, there's also a lot of farmers that sort of farm organically but that can't get the certification because it takes seven years of leaving your field. I think that's where Tottenham are at. Yeah, and I think that's where Paddock Farm, our local butchers, are at. So then you've got to think, oh, hang on a minute, because actually you know, they're still doing a lot of the right practices. Yeah. It's just the fact that the soil isn't quite... There needs reasonable. to be a new certification that's like trying to be organic. Mm. Yeah, will be organic. transitioning or something. Yeah, transitioning. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this is amazing yoghurt. But this is Hollis Mead. They haven't sent us this. We've never worked with them. We'd love to work with them. But, um, I mean, I love it when they win all these prizes. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a really nice online... Are they connected to Piper's Farm? I don't know, but if you go on, they're connected to River Cottage. I don't oh, right. Know, maybe Hollis Mead is owned by Hugh Fernley, Fernley, what's his name? Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. I actually just bought a new cookbook from him. 
Well, it's sort of from him, and it's sort of from someone else called River Cottage Great Roasts. Ah. So it's from Gelf Al Alderson, the introduction by Hugh Fernley Whitting School. Nothing to do with Hugh then. <laughs> well, it is because it's River Cottage, and that's oh, right. his brand. Okay. So I don't quite know how River Cottage brand works. Maybe people will know that watch and can tell us. Because mm -hmm. obviously we've got lots of books by him. He's a he was a TV chef, and I think River Cottage must be his like his Dalesford farm. Yes. Um, anyway, there you go. But yeah, this this breakfast, to be honest, try it because it has amazed me. This satiates me until lunchtime. Mm. So unless I'm doing an intense strength workout and I'll have eggs, I now, if I'm in a rush as well, I'll have this. I'll have a load of seeds. I'll have berries from the garden or whatever berries we can get. If it's not berry season, I'll have apple. Mm -hmm. If it's not apple season, I'll have pear or something. Something fruity on there. Yep. Um, you could have honey. I'd rather not have the honey in the morning. Um, and some nuts on there. Mm. And it really fills me up. And I think it, 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 I'm the perfect case study for like all the fads because I went through a phase where I was like, I think I'm lactose intolerant um, because it upsets my tummy. And I just think I believe the media hype that like, oh, we need oat milk. Oh, we need nut milk. Oh, we need this. Mm. And actually humans, because of, of eating and consuming animal milk for so long, most of us are not lactose intolerant. Yeah. You know, I'm, and, and what we're intolerant to is all the chemical shit that goes in the mass produced milks. It's all the shit. It's, yeah. yeah. I mean, like when you, like the milk from Hollis Mead, um, the thickness of it is Oh, it's ridiculous. totally it's different. It's almost like a cream. Yeah. And it's whole milk. Obviously, it's 100% pasture fed. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's and just... this you can buy online. So people often say, "Yeah, but we don't live in the Cotswolds. Yeah, we don't live in the countryside. Yeah. You can buy it online." Well, we sat next to a couple, didn't we? At the Harvest, or not Harvest event, the, the Dales Producers event. Yeah, they're in their sixties or early seventies. Really lovely couple, mm. and they've been Riverford customers for fifteen years since yeah. before it was called Riverford. And we want to learn more about Redford as well, don't we? Because mm -hmm. it's actually lots of different farms that are collaborating. So it's Piper's farm. Yes, mm -hmm. Piper's farm as well. And they've been ordering Riverford online. And actually, as much as we love Dalesford, I think we should start ordering more of our just veg box mm. from Riverford for our Sunday roast mm. because it is slightly more affordable and also it's convenient. Mm. And, and it's supporting then an even more vast group of farmers rather than just Dalesford. But don't Dalesford bring in farm produce from other farms they do. locally. They also do good stuff. I'm just saying maybe we're looking at ways of how we can support more than yeah. just one um, yeah, one company. But um, mm. it's interesting. It was interesting chatting to them because they live they lived in near Birmingham and yeah. they, they order everything online. Yeah. Um, so yeah, 100%. Mm. 100%. Wonderful. Okay, well, enjoy your breakfast. Save this for me because, yeah, Nathan said when you make your own yoghurt, you just need, like, a culture from a previous one. Right. Um, so I'll use this. What milk are you going to use? Don't know. Good morning, my darlings. Good morning from me. I've already spoken to Charlie this morning. Sorry, you've got the tops of my <laughs> dry shampoos in the foreground of the video. I say dry shampoos because I used two this morning, even though I did wash my hair yesterday. We all know that that wasn't a big success <laughs> because of that bloomin' power cut, but I've used a cacophony. <laughs> That's a great word. That is a word that I've not used in a very long time. If you've got this far in the video, leave a comment with the word cacophony, partly because I want to know how to spell it, in your comment down below. But in a sentence, I want you to tell me something about cacophony <laughs> in your sentence. Okay, so I used this one, which is the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo to actually make my hair feel more clean. Um, I think it's just being in London yesterday and maybe having it up in a bun, I don't know, felt like it just needed a little freshen up and this really does feel like it cleans your hair. It says on the front, actually cleans hair, eliminates oil, sweat and odour um, and you're meant to leave it for, I leave it for a good five minutes before brushing, you're meant to massage it in and everything. And then because I'm due a hair colour appointment, so my roots are a bit dark, I find that using Batiste on blondes that need a colour top up, like my roots are not the best at the moment, this just softens that um, root growth. So a cacophony of dry shampoos. I then went over to Lala's this morning, my mother's, and we had a little morning coffee together, which was lovely. She reminded me that I'd lent her the GHD Rise a little while ago and she hadn't used it in a while so she asked if I wanted it back and actually I saw 
Bambi Does Beauty, I saw a lovely Elle, she did a video, um, not talking about this, but just using this while she was talking about something else, uh, that I saw on Instagram the other day, and her hair always looks sensational, so I thought, I'm gonna start trying to use that again. Um, so I just created this little bit of movement, it's kind of like a bit of a blow-dry effect that you can achieve on day two, because obviously this is heated, but it's not quite the controlled curls that you get with a colour. So quite like quite like how that has turned out. So yeah, I'm turning this into a three day vlog or maybe a two and a half day vlog because I didn't film that much in town yesterday. And as I mentioned, I also placed a Ralph Lauren order online. So I thought for the sake of continuity, I will unbox that with you this morning and show you the bits. And then I'm heading over to Pilates at lunchtime, so that will probably be the cutoff of the vlog. But also, I need to fill you in on last night. So, went to the Bougie, I hope that's the correct, correct pronunciation, restaurant with Hannah. And amazing location on Gloucester Road, it's connected to the Bailey Hotel. It was astronomical. If you are a lover of crispy duck and pancakes, but also traditional Singaporean food, a lot of kind of Thai Malaysian dishes, it was absolutely mouth-watering and such good quality. Really, really beautiful restaurant. I would highly recommend a visit there. They had set menus, uh, daily specials. We had a Sichuan aubergine, which was so good. When I was filming, I got a couple of clips, but I kept thinking this is just not doing it justice because it was so much better than how it looked on camera. I actually was speaking to a chap from Singapore, no connection to the restaurant other than that he was eating there, before Hannah arrived and he was saying that it's some of his, some of the best Singaporean food that he's ever had outside Singapore. So that is a very, very good testament. We'll definitely be going there again. It's also not too far from Marlebone, so quite easy for me to get home again afterwards. Managed to get back in um, despite the power cut. It did last for a good few hours. <sighs> but never mind. So anyway, without further ado, let's have a little look. Sorry, I'm still... Ooh. And then this drawer is going to be... Oh my god. <laughs> Someone's YouTube video just started playing randomly. Um, yes, sorry, it's still in my little PJs. Let's have a look inside this Ralph Lauren order. <laughs> okay, I've got the box here in front of me. Thank you for ordering from Ralph Lauren. Our commitment to providing the finest products and service to our customers continues in the Ralph Lauren tradition. Lovely. So, hello. Something here in a suit hanger. What clutter can you see in the background? I can see something dark. What is that? <laughs> As you can see, I'm doing a little bit of kind of outfit planning over there. So in here, we've got this lovely suit carrier. The Icons trousers. Okay, so this was very much inspired by Hannah from Coco Beauty because I saw her styling a pair of trousers similar to this and um, she tagged them as Ralph Lauren so I thought I'd have a little look on the website. I keep seeing so many people styling wide leg cream trousers and I always think it looks so lovely. I do struggle with footwear especially being on the shorter side. Everyone is always really surprised when I say that um, and when I wrote on Instagram that I'm 5'4", so many people were like, oh my gosh, I thought you were so much taller. I try and shoot flattering <laughs> content, so often the camera has a slight tilt up to it, which maybe gives the optical illusion that I'm taller, but I'm really not. So I do often find that trousers are too long for me um, and I really need a heel to make them flattering. So Hannah is much taller than I am. Um, so even like holding them up, this is them touching the ground and that's boob height. <laughs> so these are not going to be the right length for me, but if they're fabulous, then of course I can hem them. I love that they've come with this really posh Ralph Lauren logoed wooden hanger. That is bougie. Okay darlings, I thought I would just intersperse that very casual unboxing with some try-on clips. Hopefully that's a bit more useful. So the trousers, when I initially pulled these on, I thought these are far too big. However, now that I've added a belt, and this is my fabulous best investment ever Gucci waist belt. As I mentioned, I've had this for about four years. I will try and find something similar and leave it linked down below. 
I feel like Gucci just need to bring this back because they're obviously invested in this horse bit and I've never seen anything that's so classic as this. Um, there is a little bit more fabric than I'm used to around the hips, but I have to say compared with the fittedness of my skins, still obsessed, <laughs> um, I don't find it too unflattering. However, obviously I wouldn't walk around like this because this is essentially underwear, so perhaps a really beautifully fitted um, roll neck, which is what I'll try on in a second. The trousers are far too long for me, so um, it's gonna be a little hem situation. I've heard that you can actually get like a hemming tape, which is like a really sticky tape that you can do if you are in a bit of a rush. Um, but it's not gonna to be too hard to sew these. I just need to put some um, pins in the bottom to get them sewn in in the right place. I can see why Hannah wears these so often. They feel such lovely quality. They've got a really gorgeous hang to them. I like where the pleats are. I just need to definitely play around with a few ways of styling them. I'm just gonna try popping on my little Valentino boots from last year to see if that height, height boost does any anything. Does anyone else get really nervous when you put your feet into boots for the first time each autumn winter? I just always worry that a spider is going to be living in the bottom of them. <laughs> that has never happened to me. I have never put my foot in a piece of footwear and found a spider in them, yet I still have this irrational fear. What I did do once, I think I already told you, is I put my foot in my Jambito Rossi, I call them my Aladdin shoes, my pointy slip-on mules, and immediately screamed and pulled my foot out thinking it was a spider, but it was actually <laughs> one of these earrings. And I'd been so sad because I thought I'd lost one and you obviously can't wear just one of these earrings. Um, but yeah, it was in my shoe. Anyway, Valentino's are on, trousers are still too long and I don't think the almond toe looks that good. So I'm gonna try, gonna try a pointed toe. If you're tall or at least taller than me, you're so lucky that you can wear trousers like this and flat shoes and for them to still be flattering. <laughs> These boots are pretty tall and the trousers are still too long for me, but I guess it's easier for them to make them too long because they are so easy to hem. Um, but yeah, I definitely think the pointed toe is more flattering. And I think that the height that this gives me gives such a long leg illusion. These are my very fitted Reese boots. And because the trousers are so loose, obviously it just hangs over them. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I am very happy with these. So I've just tried putting together a proper outfit and I really, really like this. It feels cozy and comfortable and yet pretty smart as well. So I have added um, the green color of the mango cardigan that I ordered last week. Really, really love these cardigans and I think they're fantastic when you're not quite ready for coats. Um, and a lot of the time when you go indoors at the moment, I find that it's still quite warm, especially if places have got the heating on. Even sat outside last week at Soho Farmhouse under a heater, I found myself getting it just way too hot. So love how this looks with a cardigan. I did grab this bag. Um, was my Nessa Porter unboxing in the last video? I think it was. However, I've got to say, I've seen this bag on the website, so I'm not sure if I might order that one and compare because this one is quite stiff and bulky. I would definitely like to compare the two. Probably a bit of overkill with the buckle and the buckle, but at least they match. Um, so yeah, I really, really like this look. I can't wait now to get the trousers tailored. I think um, I think I will get a lot of wear out of these, but I actually like how this look looks even more when I take the cardigan off because I just love a sleeveless roll neck. I think they are incredibly flattering. Love the color of this one. This one is also from the high street from Mango. I'll leave all of the parts of this outfit linked down below and I now realise that this haul section is going to be very, very long because I'm in a chatty mood, but hopefully you're enjoying um, seeing a few different, for me, autumn outfits styled up. Now, my darlings, if you have watched my channel for a while, you might recall my love for a pair of trousers from Reese called the Tyne Trousers, T-Y-N-E. And I kept saying, Reese, you need to bring them out in like a greeny color and a brown color. They did bring them out in a greeny color, but it was a little bit lighter than this. They never bought them out in brown. <laughs> Reese, you still need to do it. I'll still buy them. 
but these look very very similar um they need a good steam but i did find the time trousers so versatile and i've still got my green pair they're a little bit thicker than this actually but these have got a really nice stretch to them hopefully they don't make me look like the michelin man um i'm hoping that they will look really nice styled up with a big cozy knit perhaps that new longer chunky cable knit that i got the other day from netta porter so here we have the trousers which are similar to the Reese Tyne trousers and actually they're a little bit of a looser fit. I would say the Tynes are a bit more of a legging, um, especially from the knee below. These seem to be a little bit looser. I don't think that I need these because I have got the Reese Tyne trousers in just a slightly similar, sh uh, slightly different shade. Oh my god, I swear a fly just like flew through my hair. <laughs> Um, and I've not reached for them in a little while actually, I, they used to be by far my most worn trousers. Do you know what happened? Charlie put them in one of the drawers in the wardrobe in our bedroom, and I just never get dressed in our bedroom, I always get dressed up here, so I'm going to blame Charlie. But because I haven't worn them in a while, I don't think I need to keep these. But if you always lusted over the Reese Tyne trousers and never added them to your collection, and they don't make them anymore, as far as I'm aware, then this could be a really nice option. They would be very smart work trousers, but they're equally really comfy if you want to just like throw on some boots. These are obviously not wellies, but um, <laughs> they're probably going to look a bit weird with this outfit. But like imagine wellies for a countryside day out, pubs, dog walks, etc., farm shop visiting, then yeah, they are fantastic for that. <laughs> Up next is this lovely blouse which has got the pattern of a kind of horse bridle detail on there. It feels very equestrian chic. Imagine this with those cream high-waisted trousers, a lovely belt that's a really beautiful elevated elegant kind of countryside look. Um, this is a silk blouse. I'm sure that you could probably find something very similar to this in a much more affordable um, retailer. I'm sure even H&M had something like this once. I'm sure Holland Cooper probably do blouses like this as well. So it's gonna have to be really special to justify the more expensive price point. Um, but yeah, I thought that could be a really nice versatile blouse for autumn winter. Well, I am a changed woman because I have actually ordered a pair of jeans. Um, these actually look possibly a little bit too big for me, but you definitely don't want jeans that are too tight and um, painful on the tummy area. So I'll give those a try. They actually, they're very wide. Um, they're gonna have to obviously be significantly nicer than my Reese jeans that I've been trying to integrate into my wardrobe a little bit later, but yeah, I'll give those a go. So I've popped on the jeans and while they might feel a tiny bit big, I actually think that that could be a bit of a savior. They are by far the widest and most kind of <laughs> straight up and down, um, but I think I quite like them. Obviously, I don't have many jeans in my collection, so I don't have too much to compare them to. The way that I've really cinched them in around the waist with this little belt feels very Gen Z, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I quite like them. Oh, just realized there is a lot of pokery, jiggery going on at the back that it's not a good look. So definitely gonna have to try and find these in a smaller size, because that is, I don't know, is it like paper bag style, but unintentionally? I'm not sure if they're mega flattering. Um, I've popped them on with my little fluffy Chloe sandals, because these are just so fun for this time of year. And then, what would you wear on the top? Maybe classic cosy knit, like so. But do I need, do I need two pairs of jeans when I'm only a beginner? in the jeans department. That is the question. Quite possibly not. Ooh, this top smells like the perfume I was wearing the other day, which is so nice. I'll show you what it is in a second. I feel like for a lot of people, this would be an outfit that people wear. Um, it just doesn't ever feel like the kind of outfit that I would choose to wear. I'm not sure what occasion would lead to this kind of outfit. I don't find jeans that comfortable, um, so would I really reach for them? 
but they're a nice fit if you are a denim person then maybe maybe these might be for you i like the little sneak peek of the belt but yeah there's just too much going on around here so this is another pair of smarter trousers again trying to get that that look that i keep seeing all over instagram they need a really good steam um they don't have belt loops which again is very annoying however I will probably have to shorten them, so I could in fact make belt loops from what I shorten from the bottom if they are um, absolutely perfect in every other way. But I'll show you a little close up of the fabric. It's kind of like a woolen, I don't know how you would describe it, but it's a little bit thicker, looks like it's going to be really cosy. So next pair of trousers, unfortunately these are too big for me. I'm having to pinch them in by like two inches on the top. I think if I was in the market for a really lovely pair of work trousers, I might be tempted to take these to the tailor. Um, but the fact, oh my god, do they not have pockets? They don't even have pockets. That is scandalous. Not that you'd ever really use them as much in trousers because it does sometimes ruin the shape a little bit. I like that they are cropped and I really like that the colour of them is like a warm kind of creamy almost very light brown it's like a, a latte kind of colour um, but yeah they are much too big for me and yeah I think I'm still obviously very new to this world of trousers so not something that's probably essential in my wardrobe but I can imagine so many of you if you go into an office every day then these could be a really nice like workwear trouser and I have to say, I think they're more flattering in real life than they look on camera. And the material is really nice. If you get them to fit the waistband, your waist, perfectly, then they could be a really nice flattering trouser. Good length as well. They're cropped. So I imagine that cool girls would wear trainers with them. I quite like how they look with the little Gucci mules as well. I think that's quite fun because they're cropped and you can see that little bit of foot slash ankle. I think um, that you can be a little bit more creative with the footwear. I am actually going to see if they've got them in a smaller size because I imagine they're really comfortable as well, I bet you could travel in these and they're not too creasy so yeah I, I'm going to look for them in a smaller size but this exact pair is not quite right. So these trousers, again no belt loops, I think I actually saw these in the store on a mannequin yesterday and thought they were really lovely and I did have a feeling that I'd ordered them online. So you can see they're a brown, um, very, very subtle houndstooth. Wish it had belt loops because I am going to have to cinch this in, but I really want to try this smarter trouser look. So if I can't muster together enough lovely outfits with this selection, then maybe I need to just admit the trousers are not for me because I'm normally such a dress kind of person. But in autumn, winter, with maybe some pointed toe heel boots, then these could look really lovely. And I'm excited to just experiment and hopefully broaden <laughs> my fashion horizons a little bit. Well, these trousers are a little bit different. So it is the houndstooth woolen trousers. Um, I'm just not 100% sure on styling these because obviously the trousers are patterned so you have to go for something quite plain on the top. They are very very warm, I can tell they're going to be a nice like warm leg, however because of the lovely wool material they're actually a tiny bit itchy and I don't think I've ever had itchy legs before. <laughs> I think if you need something really warm you could obviously wear like thermal leggings underneath these they're a little bit too long for me. I don't know how I would style these and I'm not sure that I would do on a regular basis so I'm going to send these back added in with the fact that they're a bit itchy but um, hmm, yeah let me know how you would style something like this because they're a nice fit. They are a nice fit. I am begrudged to send them back because the fit is so lovely. I mean what about something like this for again just a countryside frolicking activity day. No, I just think that looks kind of weird. <laughs> Not sold on the trousers. Now these are very similar, just a thicker wool and a wider leg trouser and they do have belt loops. Hallelujah. They look quite large. Um, I feel that these might swamp me but we'll see when we try them on. <gasps> oh my gosh, these are so big on me. I can imagine that in the right size and on a taller person and someone that is really good at styling trousers, these could actually be really nice. I wish they were a little bit more darted down at the bottom. I do feel as though I've stolen 
something from a local farmer um, and not the kind of trousers that I would normally go for. Oh, sunshine is back again. Um, yeah, really, really big and unfortunately just not going to work, but they've got potential. Imagine, yeah, imagine if they fit. Imagine if I wore some ni nice boots with them. I like them. They're just miles too big. Yeah, I think, I think again, I may buy them in the right size. I presume that they just didn't have my size. These are a size two. I probably need a zero or even a double zero in these. And hopefully a smaller size might remove some of the bulk. Um, yeah, I do love them. And unlike the other woolen trousers, because these aren't so much on my skin, I don't feel any itchiness. I think there are pockets there, but they're stitched up, but they probably are best left that way. We shall resume talking about these when I've got them in the correct size. I really was going for a variety here. These are kind of like a cord almost like a very, very um, thin corduroy style trouser in this warm caramelly brown color, needs ironing. Um, belt loops, yes, they feel quite like utilitarian. Um, would probably be more flattering if they went into a little bit more of a pleat down at the bottom, but again, eager to give those a go. So interestingly, these are actually the best fit of all of the trousers that I've tried on so far. Um, they fit me really well around the waist, I'm not even reaching for a belt. They fit snug around the booty. They are giving Bindi Sue Irwin vibes. <laughs> when I was younger, I was obsessed with Steve Irwin. We went to Brisbane. Not with the sole purpose of seeing him, but we did go to Australia Zoo and I got the most amazing photo on my brick-sized digital camera of Steve Irwin, literally like this, with a bit of meat hanging down and the crocodile is like this. Um, yeah, <laughs> Crocodile Hunter is the vibe of these trousers, but I quite like them. Cadet Josie is what you can call me from now on. Styling-wise, hmm. This is gonna take a little bit of imagination. Don't know if you've seen me undo this yet, but this is a Ralph blouse um, that arrived in this order. Let's try it. I don't know if the blouse is maybe too smart in comparison to the Crocodile Hunter vibes of the trousers. I don't know actually, I quite like that. I feel like it really smartens them up. Let's add a belt. Well, you can't really see the belt um, unless I'm really quite swishy, but I really, really like this. I like the light and the pattern of the blouse and the femininity of it versus the utility of the trousers. We are gonna have that footwear problem again though, even though they're a good length. I think I need to get some ankle kind of versions of these. Although actually they are so slim to the leg that um, it almost doesn't matter how long they are and <laughs> maybe it'll go some way to keeping my legs warm, she says optimistically. We are quite well uh, layered here because I've obviously got the Skims little brown uh, body on underneath. This one's really taken me by surprise and I feel like I've never made an effort styling trousers before. Maybe I'm entering a new era, <laughs> a new fashion era, including trousers. With a bag, could we even add a cable vest. Ooh, this is where it could get fun. I have to also say, I kind of, kind of apologize. I apologize, but I don't know, about how much fashion and newness has been on the channel lately. I think I'm in a funny place with what's in my wardrobe right now. Um, I'm seeing so much online, like people that I follow on Instagram that's really inspiring me. Uh, so much that I love in the shops and also change of season. What's that F Scott Fitzgerald quote about fall being the season of change? Well, this makes it look very preppy. <laughs> I quite like it. It feels like smart Josie. This is Josie's got a day of meetings at Soho Farmhouse or Josie is going for a day of meetings in London and needs to remind everyone that actually she's a countryside girl. Yeah, I am quite liking this different for me, but as always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Okay, a lipstick top-up is needed. 
that's better. Okay, so th <laughs> this outfit actually contains no Ralph Lauren. Um, I just saw these trousers hanging up on my rail and I realized that I didn't show them to you in the H&M haul. Spoiler alert, they're not H&M. <laughs> you know how H&M starts to now put loads of random brands in with the H&M stuff? I don't know, I guess it's all within the same parent company. But I thought I would try them on in a similar style to how I've been styling the Ralph bits. That trip to the flag show yesterday really did inspire me when it comes to styling trousers, trousers with outfits? Outfits with trousers. So um, yeah, I thought I would try this look and I do really like this combination of cozy fabrics. I like the layering. That's what's fun about this time of year. The layering is very, very fun indeed. I've bought out this bag again which has been a favourite of mine over the last few years. Mango roll neck. Um, this is from a brand called, I think it's called like Arch 54 or Arch 74. I got it on Net-A-Porter a few years ago, but I think we'll be able to find it on the outnet or at least something similar. And then the same Reese boots. I really do need to get some more um, boots because otherwise I'm going to be wearing these every single day. But yeah, I do really, really like this outfit. I think this is quite a good, um, one that I will probably wear on repeat. I'm, yeah, I'm just quite enjoying this new form of styling things up as always. Just, yes, your feedback, because this is all a little bit new to me. But yeah, like how it looks with the cross body bag. And I also really like if you get warm, if you're eating, um, if the air heating is on full blast. I have got the Skims bodysuit on, surprise, surprise. And you know what? It's quite good that you don't really see it through the colour. And the high-waistedness of the trousers paired with the heel height of the boots is giving me the illusion of not the world's shortest legs, which I do have. Yeah, I think it's quite... I think if I was still going into London every day for work, then these are the kind of outfits that I would be tempted to be wearing into the office at this time of year. I think if you are... No matter your job, even if you're not office based, if you're a teacher, if you're an interior designer, I think these could be some really nice workwear outfits. And then the final thing, and I've got a feeling this might actually be my favourite, is this sensational cape. I just love a cape. I think they're absolutely beautiful. You look so elegant when you're wearing a cape. Um, and this one has got this really lovely little belt buckle detail up here. It is wool, little armholes here beautiful silky lining um, and yeah I just feel that so many casual outfits can be elevated with the addition of a cape so really looking forward to trying this on um, by the looks of it I have got a real mixture of sizes here so I will let you know in the try on clips that you might have just seen what size I ordered and a little bit of sizing feedback as well so this is the knit dress that I purchased in the flagship yesterday and I just wanted to try it on again with a pair of boots. Love how it looks with the boots. I can imagine myself wearing this a lot when we're hosting friends at home and I want to be cosy with slippers. That's probably how I wear it the most but I thought I would try the cape on top of this. Yesterday in the store I popped a little waist belt on but if it's a Sunday roast day then there will be no belt. Belt not required. I've got to say the quality of this feels absolutely beautiful. The strap detail is really, really lovely. I'm now just thinking perhaps a dress and a cape is not the best combo. You want quite a sleek outfit underneath, something um, with trousers perhaps, but we've got it on now. Yeah, not, not something to wear with a dress. Oh my gosh, this is heavenly. Or is it? I don't know, that could be quite cute, but I love seeing the little brown sleeve. No, it's not working with the dress underneath, is it? Love seeing the little brown sleeves coming out. Oh my gosh, this is absolutely adorable. So it's really nice how it kind of floats open. It feels quite Gossip Girl. I love, love, love how this looks. Beautiful detail up here. You've got a sweet little collar. How would you style a cape? Let me know your styling thoughts. Ooh. Fling it on the floor. <laughs> Styling thoughts down below. Nice with a cute little handbag. I'm actually not disliking it with um, with the dress, to be honest. I think that's pretty cute. What about with a different pair of shoes? I need to get some opaque brown tights. I think that could work quite well in my autumn wardrobe. 
Do you know a brand that I used to talk about so often here on this channel that I've not really worn in the last three years and it's really surprising? Stuart Weitzman. Stuart Weitzman boots have come to the rescue. I needed something, yes, I put black tights on. I think I needed something over the knee because I didn't want to have this strip of material here and then another gap where it was like leg and boot. So over knee boots to the rescue. They're a very similar color to the cape and I absolutely love how this looks. I think it could look equally lovely. Do you know what? Like with the dress shorter. Imagine if you couldn't see any of the dress and it just went straight from cape to boots. That's also a really nice look. But the moral of the story is that I'm loving the cape, especially how it looks with some brown sleeves poking on through. So there we go. Now, my darlings, wasn't expecting to do this little trial at the end of the video. And I'm sure it's made the video really long because I have been... Um, chatting through the items and the outfits so much so i think i'm going to end the vlog here i really hope you enjoyed it the next vlog that you'll be seeing i have got i hate to be that person but i've got an exciting announcement so stay tuned please make sure you're subscribed and i am very 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 excited to catch up with you in the next video thank you for watching Hello, it's me again, makeup off and ready for bed. I know this is the world's longest vlog and you're probably very sick of seeing my face, but because it's been a long one, I didn't want you to forget about the amazing Skin and Me discount code that I shared in the beginning of the video because it is fantastic. So Josie09Y, that will get you your first month for 4 99 and I'm going to leave it in the very top of the description box. And that really is <laughs> the last word from me, darlings. So I hope you've enjoyed this mega long vlog. Um, why don't you leave the word skin in your comment if you got to the very end of the video. And darlings, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Good night.